Where is he? Is he here? Oh, I'm so excited. I flew all the way to Europe to meet Ronaldo. <laughs> <sighs> oh, is your grandson coming today? I was hoping Alas to meet not. him. Alas oh. not. Ronaldo, you're a bit of a superstar. You're a bit of a add an I, take out the O. Ronaldo, but it's time to put the trial on trial. I, I feel like you agree. It's time to put academia on trial. This man is a magnificent academic, and it's important that I say that because we need that at this conference, and we need the sort of work he does. I, we won't get into daddy issues today, but my father's a proper academic, <laughs> <laughs> and I understand what that means. It's whether academia is delivering. This man is one of Australia's most published and cited academics. Now, I know that is like winning gold medal in the midget high jump, but, <laughs> <laughs> but nonetheless, credit where credit's due. Science doesn't care about your opinion, and that's why we need science. However, my dear friend, terrified as I am, and much as 2,500 people separately told me over lunch, you're going to make mincemeat of me. <laughs> I think it's not possible to comfort the afflicted unless we afflict the comfortable. And I'm worried that there's a priesthood and there are parishioners in medicine right now. And people like you and I that get way too much stage time are the priesthood. So why did you invite me? I didn't know your name a week ago, mate. Oh, okay. <laughs> I Fair thought you enough. were a football player. If only, <laughs> if only. Ronaldo, I hope I've made the point how appreciated you are. I'm going to try and be every man on behalf of other people here. I'm going to go the Jacuzzi route, the Emile Zola, turn of the century, believed that the French establishment had closed ranks and become too comfortable around the time of the Dreyfus accusations. You could say the same thing about Martin Luther, nailing stuff much closer to here on a church door. And so I'm gonna... far, lots of people that were on the firing squad or were killed, so hopefully I have an escape route. Well, you were there, weren't you? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know that I look a bit that way, <laughs> yeah. So while completely unfair, I'm going to argue and make you the cartoon villain that there's plenty of research, but a hell of a lot of that research ends up looking like me-search. Self-congratulatory, so you can fly in the front of the plane, so you can <laughs> buzz around the world. If only. <laughs> Let's start, I'm sorry. Let's start with kidneys, CRRT. Do you know why they nail coffins shut, Ronaldo? Well, what they told me goes something like this. The oncologists are doing the ward round and it's Monday morning and they say to the intern, Mrs. Smith is due for chemotherapy. And the intern politely says, but she died on Saturday. The oncologists say, well, that's never stopped us before. Please. <laughs> Please go to the graveyard, dig her out, open the coffin, and bring her in, and we'll give her chemo. So the intern, being the right kind of aspiring oncologist, goes to the graveyard, digs out the coffin, opens it up, and there is a note. It says, gone to dialysis. We'll be back in the afternoon. There you go. <laughs> Just like we didn't rehearse it. <laughs> we didn't. Uh, <laughs> we didn't. <laughs> are we any further on when I was but a wee whippersnapper of a medical student? You dialyze people for A-E-I-O-U. <laughs> it's about 30 years ago. 
Has anything changed? Because there's been an enormous amount of wank in the literature ever since that <laughs> point. How are we getting up? Well, it's complicated, like <laughs> everything else. We are acutely treating more and more people, not necessarily because we drive it, but because other specialties drive it. And we are creating a group of people that are at high risk of end-stage renal disease after ICU. And the data is building up. But unless we change the mind frame or what people believe, as Alex Siridis spoke this morning, is good for patients, this thing is going to go on for a long time. It certainly is. Has anyone thought of doing the, the anticoagulation study of heparin versus citrate versus embalming fluid? I feel in there's something that... <laughs> I, I, I think that would be a good idea for some patients. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, I would get into trouble with the ethics committee, and then I wouldn't be able to do all the randomized control trials that I want to do before I die. My dear friend, do we have a vanity of small differences when it comes to studies? In other words, we look at the things that likely aren't going to make a difference because it would be bloody obvious that insulin helps a diabetic. Is this why we have so many negative trials? I tell you what, just imagine an intervention that everyone gets, like oxygen. And just imagine that you show that achieving a different target of oxygen saturation in critically ill patients makes a 1% difference for something that everyone gets you would save more lives than a little earthquake in Pakistan being stopped. You've uh, published a thousand papers. Bravo. Genuinely. Thanks. My sense is, from understanding human factors, that either means you've got massive imposter syndrome, <laughs> or you can't edit. Which of the two would that be? Neither. I work with lots of really great people. I have a team that I work with, and I have lots of collaborators. John is just sitting there behind me. Paul Young was around. I work together with people for the common good. And so when we win, we win as a team. The individual never matters in research. It's all about the patient, just like you said you on go, Monday sir. morning. It's all about the patient. You have read every paper you have written. I know that. It is true. Because I asked Several people. times. Probably proofread it too. And you deserve enormous credit for that. What percentage of senior authors do you think have read their papers? 100%. Geez, it depends on the author. I expect that um, some people are really very good, and some people really do contribute. There are a few people that may not be so diligent, but alas, I cannot name them in public. Peer review, Ronaldo, is it broken? It's an imperfect process for which no substitute has yet been found. It's a little bit like democracy. It's interesting you should mention Winston Churchill. He's on the screen oh, right Winston, now, my friend. There you go. <laughs> Very good. Sort of reminds me of another Winston Churchill quote. Um, second, second. There we go. There Men is. occasionally uh, stumble over the truth, but most of them pick themselves up and hurry off as if nothing had happened. Um, if we stopped doing clinical work, we'd know about it within a week. A well, day, perhaps. It kind of happened in Israel about 15 years ago. The doctors went on strike for about a week and mortality plummeted. <laughs> uh -oh. My understanding is the same thing's been shown when cardiologists go to conferences as well. Well, this is how it works. The cardiologists go to conference with the cardiac surgeons and the anesthetists. And the cardiac surgeon is sitting in the business class seat and says to the flight attendant, please get me an anesthetist. So she says, of course, sir. So she goes to the economy seats and says, the surgeon wants you. The anesthetist immediately rushes sure. to the business seat and says to the surgeon, what can I do for you? And the surgeon says, please recline my seat. Very nice. And the anesthetist immediately does it. And then he goes back to his seat. And then it's lunchtime, and the flight attendant returns with a half-eaten meal mm -hmm. for the cardiac surgeon and says, this is from first class. 
One of the several cardiologists there thought you might be hungry. Yeah, I'm, I'm showing a slide that uh, has one in three scientists admit to using questionable practices. You're making jokes. There's a problem, right? There's a real problem in research, isn't there? There is a problem. There is a problem in life. A lot of human beings admit to questionable practices. A lot of them drink and beat up their wives. It's very sad. <laughs> human beings are perfectible, but not perfect. S sorry, who's beating up their wives? <laughs> <laughs> the Irish, isn't it? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yellow card. Yellow card. <laughs> That's absolutely ridiculous. It's the English. <laughs> but then you can, <laughs> you can confess. Research needs to improve. You're at the top of it. You are. You're the, you're the Pope. So what can the Pope do? It's Vatican II time. I think there are no easy answers. I think that it's a continuing process. It's a continuing attempt to conduct better trials, to understand research, to understand evidence. Just relentless, chipping away at the stone. I could drop on it every day, every time, every moment, relentlessly. As I say to my wife, the voices tell me to do so. There are a ludicrous number of journals out there. I get invited in flowery terms on a daily basis to contribute to them. I apologize, my normal voice is bad enough. You know, there's a Staffordshire Terrier out there that is uh, an associate editor for seven different online journals. Interestingly enough, the Staffordshire Terrier is called Ollie. <laughs> Okay, that's very good. How can we shut this nonsense down? Because the wow. no signal to noise ratio in research. Yeah, so there are lots of what are known as predatory journals that make you believe that they're interested in you, you know, sending something to them and they'll publish it for a modicum fee, which is just complete profiteering. And it's become explosive and it's duly noted. And alas, we cannot stop it and we go back to human beings. It's very difficult. But I think people can tell the difference between good work and crazy stuff, or at least many people can. Thank you. Last question. Most researchers are not getting their messages out. And I give you credit and those other Pope-like figures that come to a conference like this. Isn't it an absolute requirement Yes. Why do people think the job is done once the paper is published? Why is Twitter looked down upon? Why is podcasting looked down upon? And Pope, how are you going to solve that in your second term? There is a, there is a disease amongst high-level researchers. It's called self-importance. It's very difficult to cure, but I think these initiatives and these activities are the beginning of a degree of sedition against that kind of attitude, and hopefully with time, all of this will change. Fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, you get to vote. Do we have an epidemic of research, or do we have an epidemic of me-search? There's a beer on this. And by the way, I'll share my beer. <laughs> do we get a vote? Yep, it's up to the jury now. Who votes for Okay, is most of what's produced me search? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Or research? Yeah. That's good to know. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. That's two beers I've had to buy now. <laughs> to research. To research indeed. Thank you very much, folks.